it'll be interesting because I mean, virtual reality is that you escape into a whole nother reality, a whole nother world. But to be doing it with other people, I think that's going to be different and interesting in itself. I guess I've never been able to experience like a virtual experience like this. Just taking the green line over here, I was sitting next to someone I'd never met before and just said, if you get off here, you can get one of these 360 headsets and view this experience that I made. And so seeing people who have never tried it before is always really exciting. This feels cool because it's like you're on a train and then virtually you're on a different train. It actually feels really natural like you're actually looking around. That seems to be kind of the up and coming thing, the wave of the future, right? And I mean, the fact that it's all free, they give you this stuff uh, to just take home and play with. I'm excited to do it in real life, to be around other people um, and play around with it. <laughs> We've been throwing around the idea for a couple of years how we could do a project with visuals and sound that is triggered by geolocation. And Todd Boss thought it was a great idea to uh, put something like exactly like this together. So I'm Todd Boss. I'm the producer of Chaos on the Green Line, which is the world's first virtual reality experience on a public transit mode. And we're at the Snelling Avenue stop during Northern Spark, which is a night-long festival of the arts, where we're premiering this uh, experience. And it's fun to test people's willingness to hop into that and see people kind of be weary about it because I kind of like that. Like, take a risk a little bit, you know? And you're not going to fall over, you're not going to puke, but you might just kind of take a little double step and forget that you are riding on a train. Probably should sit down too. <laughs> I've wanted to try the virtual reality situation like in the train because I've seen it in rooms before, but never in like a, a train where you're actually moving. So how, how does it work exactly then? It's uh, geolocation based so that as you're moving through certain points, you're also experiencing different parts of the reality. Chaos will ensue. Headphones on. All right, I got it. I really liked the fact that it was tied to a specific location. So you had the virtual reality was mixing with the the real reality in a, in a way that was more augmented and less artificial. I mean, I felt like my head was in the clouds because I could look each way uh, and see a whole nother picture, right? that it wasn't just one still image, but it was constantly developing. So I could turn left and turn right, and you're seeing a whole nother landscape. Oh, I didn't realize you could uh, change your perspective on it. It looks like there's a person jumping out of a plane right now. Oh, there they go. The film isn't linear, it's really intuitive, and there's stuff happening all around you. As you, depending on where you look, you'll put together a different narrative based on what you see. And that's kind of how I wanted it, so that you could ride it one way and then get back on the train and ride it the other way and see something totally different. There's a lot of destruction. There's some really creepy bugs. There's some explosions. Bison. And bison, and yeah. and some like kind of cowboyish folks that are like running alongside the train, and sh I don't know if they were actual shots fired, but the cavalry is catching up with us. us. Whatever was, it was happening, it was intense. Sure. Yeah, it was yeah. like the Wild West. It was definitely something that was very immersive, and I was a commuter on the Green Line for most of last year, so kind of taking a familiar space and making it unfamiliar. But I would do it again for sure. For sure, I would do it again. It's pretty fun. It's a really cool experience. I like it. I hope to see it expand in the future. We hope that it's going to work after uh, Northern Sparks too. It's going to come back from Snelling to Lexington and see what happens. Yes, yes, yes. So the goal is to make this a permanent installation. This first year's two-ride experience is just a proof of concept. The hope is to invite film teams from around the world to fill out all 23 of the rides in 2018. So it'll be a 55 minute experience all told when it's finished, but that's the, that's the big dream. I value public spaces and I think it's important that we should encourage more interactions, but everybody's on their phone nowadays anyway. So the question now to my mind is, how do you shift that gaze? How do you focus that attention? And so at least if everyone can uh, be looking at the same thing, maybe they'll talk about it afterwards. 
to you try this? Oh yeah, I tried that. Yeah, I, I liked it. It's like a real virtual reality helmet that they made. I think I'm inside the game. It was going up, down, and around. So. Like you're actually in the roller coaster. Made me feel good. Made me feel Wait. awesome. Feel like I was somewhere that I couldn't be yet. It felt like one of those roller coasters where I wasn't old enough to ride yet. 